Good morning and welcome to our webinar today. My name is Andrew Phillips from Sadal UK and today we're going to be looking at the BoyMIT CRM for Outlook ribbon. We thought that it was a good time to cover off the ribbon and its capability to really give you an idea of how this can help right now with all the remote working uh, and bringing your team together and essentially putting all the right information where it needs to be and giving them the most effective way of getting to that information. Uh, Boyam have done a fantastic job with this ribbon uh, in connecting it to SAP Business One. And whether you're on HANA or SQL, it supports both. And whether you are on premise or cloud hosted, uh, it, it is able to run on both just as well. So, in my environment today, I'm, I'm currently running in, uh, in cloud on Amazon AWS, but uh, again, it doesn't matter wherever you're running. So, BoyMIT's CRM for Outlook provides an instant access to essential information and makes it easy to perform SAP Business One tasks from within Outlook, enabling employees from all departments to respond swiftly and accurately to your leads, customers, and suppliers. And it really does do exactly that. It does an incredibly good job at uh, bringing the information together. It's up to five times faster to access relevant SAP information um, it, it enhances your team collaboration and really putting that detail and the information that your, your staff need and again different departments, sales team, finance, puts it all in, in perspective and in one place. Um, it's got an integration to the 10 most used SAP Business One objects. So we're going to be taking a look through these. Uh, calendar synchronization is hugely powerful. Um, we'll, I'll look at that towards the end, but that's where all of your activities in SAP, if you're using those, and, and I really, again, with now, current times, I, I think it's so important to use those. You can really benefit from them. Those are your tasks that drive things, and uh, with the ribbon, it can actually integrate that to your native um, calendar uh, outside of SAP. So any tasks that you assign to yourself or to other team members can just flow straight into their calendars. Uh, file sharing and sync back to SAP, again, hugely powerful. You have emails coming in all the time from customers, leads or suppliers, and, and you want to actually take that detail and, and the information that's in that uh, correspondence and p potentially any uh, attachments, and you want to link it into SAP, and the ribbon can actually move that with the attachments, and it will take a copy and move it to the server. Uh, they have out-the-box integrations with their uh, MailChimp connector, uh, Google Maps and uh, any VoIP or uh, voice over IP phones that you have, like uh, well Skype, uh, Skype for Business, 3CX, um, and most importantly, it's all real time. You can add, update your business partners anytime. It's all accessible over the web. So as long as the server component is up and running, you can access this. You do not need SAP Business One installed locally, so you can install the ribbon independently of SAP Business One. Um, it supports multiple company, and you can see all your business partners just as you move through your emails. If they're in the database, it will recognize them and bring through their data and their details, and we're gonna take a good look through the ribbon shortly. Uh, and you can actually add new contacts or business partners from uh, emails that you've never had in before see your upcoming tasks, your to-do lists, and the objects that we can create. So we can create activities, service calls, opportunities, quotes, and orders. Uh, you can see all open documents against the particular business partner. Again, lead, customer, or supplier side. And the synchronizing of the calendars, very powerful. So, without further ado, I'm gonna jump into Outlook. Okay, so here we go. I'm on an email, I've got the ribbon running and connected and up at the top you can see all of this information is actually coming through from SAP. So this email address uh, has been associated against this business partner, Worldpack UK. You can see it's a supplier, so I've got my purchase documents over here. And if I click on the arrow, just like SAP, that will actually pop up and I can edit anything that's in white, just like SAP, I can actually make amendments and uh, changes directly. So you can change contact numbers or emails. You can also from here add or amend any contact persons and addresses. So it really does um, great supplier. Uh, really integrates nicely and it brings a far faster way and you can see an update at the bottom. A far faster way of updating your 
SAP data. So, if I jump to another email, you'll see the ribbon immediately refreshes and it changes to that new business partner that it's associated to. If I click on another one, now you can see that's a customer. So it's Underwood Electro Electro Electrical Limited, and I can click on their address, okay? And you can see all the addresses that are listed against the business partner. And where I was talking about the integrations earlier, Google Maps, if I click on that, it will immediately load straight into Google. And I could, you know, from there, just use the native Google Maps to get my route planned towards that customer. Okay, jump back to the ribbon. We've got the contact numbers. So these are all on the business partner level. I can see, you know, the telephone number one, telephone two, and the fax. And if I wanted to edit, edit any of these, I could click control and, and click on them and they will open up to edit. Uh, again, you do have the ability from the little arrow there to edit anything that you want. Um, okay, even on a contact level, you can modify them like that too. And if we wanted to um, dial out, so if we've got VoIP enabled, I could actually click on any of these and it will, will drill, uh, drill straight through and send that to the VoIP. You've got a couple of uh, nice little bits of information up here. So we can see the customer or the suppliers group that they belong in. We can see the current account balance and we can see the website uh, for the customer. Again, clicking on any of these will open them up. So that would open the web. We've got some KPIs. Again, this flips between a customer and a supplier side, but this is the year to date sales, it's month to date, and you can just, at an overview, see what's happening with that account. And the item sold, if I click on that, I can see their top sold items this year. Okay, and the value that we've made from each item. This little arrow here shows you use to find fields. So for each of you who have uh, customized your business partners and added some use to find fields for specific things that you want to see, you can actually choose and you define what you want to see in your ribbon. Those are all my use to find fields on the business partner level. And I can choose by ticking the ones I want to see and then immediately when I click on the arrow, I can see the value that is against them, okay? And again, those can all be edited if, if you want to change anything. So when we have the situation, there happens to be, a, uh, again, a lead, a customer, a supplier that we want to find, and they're not happen to be in our uh, inbox, um, we can click on this find over here, and that will automatically uh, load up a search screen where you can just type any part of the uh, business partner name, and you'll find uh, they, they will list the results. So it's like a Google style search. So if I'm looking for a co company called Werner, okay, there he is. And I can now see on the right hand side, I can see the contacts that exist against it. I can see any open documents or open items. And within any of these screens, everywhere, there is one of these little uh, uh, expander boxes. If you actually click on that, it will load the activity or the, the document up. So I can actually see that's the activity and it's from SAP. That's an SAP activity um, that is open and I can see it against that. And I can see all the detail, I can see what it's related to, the user, uh, which is really great. Um, up here at the top, we've got the, the key info about the customer itself. Again, golden arrow, if you want to drill in, just like SAP, it will take you to the master screen, master data screen for editing. And uh, you can see all the key info there. And trackings, I'll touch on a bit later on. Uh, from the side here, we've got our Google Maps integration again over there. And you can make the, you can mark business partners as your favorites if they're your key accounts that you want to keep track of, which actually will show over here where I've tagged to. Um, and you can create activities, service calls, contacts, from, from this higher screen, or you drill down into the uh, level lower. So I'm on the business partner screen, just like in SAP. And from here, I can create these different uh, documents directly. Okay, moving on from there. If I go back to the main ribbon, um, move back to Underwoods. Okay, so we've taken a look at this section here. We've looked at our favorites, we've looked at find. 
now we're looking at the contact specifically. So whilst I'm on this particular email, which is Mandy Jones, uh, who is uh, from Underwoods, if there's any other contact that I want to actually get hold of, if you click on the arrow to drop down, I can actually choose that person to see all of their details. So there's Norm Thompson, he's the CEO. There's his contact numbers over there. Um, and I can click the email button if I want it to do a direct send to Norm, straight from there. If you've enabled uh, the MailChimp integration as well, you can f directly from the ribbon actually associate uh, the, the contact to specific mail shots, the campaigns. And over here, again, like on the business partner screen, we can actually add any particular uh, user defined fields that we want to actually be able to see or update directly from the ribbon. Clicking on these little uh, expand arrows here, if you click on that, it will actually open up a screen that can again be edited. Anything in white is uh, editable. So I can change any details for Norm directly. Also, if you happen to have uh, your sales team keeping all of their contacts in in Outlook to get them into SAP, because initially that is one of the, the key areas which uh, it doesn't happen as much as it should. Uh, so people keep contacts locally. This ribbon is really about bringing uh, that ease of getting them to SAP, but you can use the ad from Outlook, which will load up a screen which shows all the local um, contacts and you can actually import those individually to a new contact uh, if you were adding a new one or updating an existing one. From the screen, we can also do, again, create documents directly against norm. So I could create an activity against norm, service call, opportunity, quote, or an order. Okay, right now, moving on to the section over here, we have trackings. Now, the way trackings work is, think of it as a sticky note. Um, so if there's particular emails that you wanna keep in focus whilst you're dealing with something for a, a, a customer or a, a, business, a business partner, so a lead or, or a supplier, you can actually just tag the email, essentially you tracking it. So we track it, it will create what's called a tracking, which when you click on it, you can just keep any of those uh, particular um, sticky notes uh, in, in focus. And then when you're done and you might've dealt with that particular issue, it could have been like a credit note we had to deal with or uh, an invoice query. Once you're done with that, you can actually untrack them by just, whilst you're on the email, you can untrack or control click to un untrack a particular thread. So I'm gonna delete the tracking, okay. And now we get on to the creation of um, object. So in SAP, you'll be familiar with obviously creating quotes and orders and activities. You can do that all directly from the ribbon. So when we're uh, on a particular email here, and this is one of the fantastic pieces that I, I'm excited to show you is the activity. When you click to create that, you'll see what it does is it automatically takes the email, takes the subject, puts it up in the remarks, and it takes the body of the email and it puts it straight into the body of the activity in SAP. We then have the activity um, dropdowns as defined. So each, each company database, you can define your additional types and subjects. So you have, these are the predefined ones from SAP for the activity types, but the subjects and the uh, essentially subtypes are all user definable. So you could create different sections for different teams. Um, this might be a quality uh, to certification that I'm attaching and I want you to note over here, you see the attachments. We had an attachment there. If you had multiple attachments, we'd see several here. But if I click on that, you can see that attachment file has actually been, it's been passed in here and that will end up going into SAP uh, to the server share. Um, okay, so when we jump back to the general tab, it, we define the, the um, activity, any details you want. Maybe I'm, this isn't for me. Maybe I want to assign this to uh, one of my colleagues, Joe Smith, and I might pick a date. So this needs to be done by Wednesday. Okay, that's fine. And I might want to link it to something in particular. So this is obviously from a supplier. It's purchase related. So let's link it to uh, one of their purchase orders. Okay, yeah, that's fine. So I'm relating it to purchase order 794 as an activity. 
Uh, I've got used fine fields again there, and there's my attachment. Okay, that all looks fine. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to save that, and you can see it's immediately oh, it's added that, and that's an added activity now in SAP. And just so you can see, I'm not misleading you. Go to the last activity in SAP. There is that activity all been created and there is the attachment okay so it is all absolutely live next on to creation of quotes or service calls it's the same concept if you are on the email you can actually just click create again I'll, I'll just go through these so you can see how it works for each object Okay, that's a create the service call. And it just transfers the, the email data straight through to the service object screen, and you can fill in you know, all, the, all the key service related stuff. So it's an email, it came in as a software fault type, network, call type, all, all of that is standard service call handling, um, and I could add that and assign it to myself or a particular technician. And if we were to want to create a opportunity quote or order same concept that's the opportunity screen you'll be familiar with this if you work with opportunity so you you define the opportunity name and the and the stage that it's at and you can then obviously link the specific documents to particular stages and it will just uh, really it kind of brings that uh, ability to quickly create those opportunities from the email get them into sap so that the sales team obviously has visibility of all the opportunities that are moving. Okay, and quotes, quotes and orders, very similar objects. So I'm just gonna, I'll pick a quote, but let's say, so I wanted to create a quick quote against Underwoods and thereafter a couple of items. So uh, they want some of these uh, rainbow printers and maybe they want, um, they want some labels. So we, they want five labels and they want 10 printers, okay, and we can apply discounts here if we want, yep, with that we'll give you 10% uh, printer top up. Okay, when I'm happy, I can check where am I delivering it to. Any user defined fields can be applied there. Uh, it's automatically taken it to the customer uh, norm who's on the email, and he might give me a, a, a PO reference, PO ref. Okay, when I'm ready, I can just click save and close. Okay, and that's immediately created that. And again, jump back to SAP. Let's check out our last quote. Okay, and there it is. There's the quote live in SAP. Right. Okay, and that takes us on to open documents. Uh, so as you've probably been seeing as we move through our emails, we're seeing the related open documents for the business partner. So those are the open supplier documents for Acme. If I jump back over here to Underwoods, those are the open sales related uh, customer specific documents. So we've got open opportunities, we've got open quotations, orders, invoices, service calls and activities. And these again are all um, interactive. So if I wanted to uh, open one up and see what's going on with this opportunity 73. I can actually see all the detail there. I can see what stage it's at. I can see if there's any um, specific uh, BP channel information, the project, information source, industry, any used to find fields if they are related and any related activities. Okay. From here, you can create additional activities related to this opportunity and you can customize the grid. So anywhere where you see a customize um, icon like that, you can actually change and take away columns that you, that you don't actually want to use or you don't uh, uh, typically uh, work with. Okay, and you drag them and then they will um, apply and that grid is now saved. Okay. Open quotation, same idea. If I want to pick that one up, I can open it and have a look. Right, and remember, all of this is editable. So if I happen to have Paul Jones from Underwoods on the phone, he says, listen, I'm ready to take this if you can do me a little bit of discount. 
I can apply that discount, uh, put a little note in there, uh, and or month discount applied. Right, and when I'm happy with that, I can just save and close. Okay, and again, it, print and delivery, if you have that, you could have automated the actual sending out of that quote, that updated quote. Um, but uh, yeah, so that gives us a good feel from open documents. And again, it applies all the way through. So sales guys are going to be interested in those three in particular. Uh, accounts, if they're chasing up a customer and they've got you know, email in from someone in the accounts department, they could see immediately look at how many invoices are overdue and, and all of the red, the red um, uh, text shows that it's, an, it's overdue. So we can see there's 75 open invoices um, and pretty much all of them are overdue with the exception of these two at the bottom. Um, uh, we have our service calls, open service calls. And up, you can see all the detail, you can add remarks, add activities, solutions, uh, you've got your access to your use defined fields there. Um, you can change the status. Um, okay, and then open activities. So again, everything related to this business partner account, that's an open activity, um, which will be across the team. So there could be sales, purchase related, uh, finance related activities, against the account. So the next step, when we have contacts that aren't in the database or haven't been added yet, the ribbon makes that very easy. So I've clicked on an email up here at the top. Now what I've done is I'm going to simulate two different uh, ways of adding contacts. So the first, we happen to have a business partner already in SAP where the domain is actually been set up on the business partner. So the ribbon looks for that. So even though I haven't added this email, feedback.uk, it actually, when I click on this as a V1 connection, it does a smart search on the domain. So it actually managed to find that this, this domain belongs to this customer. And if I didn't agree with that, I could actually just overwrite that. And again, I could pick, pick a particular customer or a supplier, and I can see uh, all of the records here, but the, the nice thing is that it's it does do the, the sort of smart searching, so that's a very fast way of it getting it in. And I can just click OK, and it will immediately create the contact in the business partner. And you've seen the ribbon is now refreshed live from Werner Richter, and it has all of his details there. So we can immediately see all of the data that belongs to that customer or supplier or lead. That takes us on to the next part over here, timeline. So when you're on a, a business partner, and again, keep in mind everyone's working remotely and they're working on different things for your business partners. Timeline gives us a nice chronological order, uh, everything that is happening on the account. So you can see if there's incoming payments or if there's invoices or any queries on the account. Uh, you can just at a snapshot see the most recent 10 things that's happened. And that works again across customers and suppliers and leads. Um, so if I jump, oh, jump over there and timeline, I can see all the things that are happening on the account and it just moves between records as we change. Okay. Right, custom reports. So this, this does require you to have the B1 app add-on uh, already, which I'm sure a lot of you who, who are already aware of Boyum will know all about B1UP. Um, if we have B1UP enabled, any of your SQL reports can be exposed. So they can actually be embedded straight to the ribbon and dynamic on the business partner. Uh, so essentially, here we go. This is uh, Underwoods. If I click on reports, I've set up two different uh, report views there. Uh, open credit notes or open opportunities and actually that's a good one so you can see open opportunities up at the top there is eight um, but if I click on it here you're gonna see my view and that that's a SQL view so that can have whatever detail you want um, these are these allow you to do grouping as well so essentially if I wanted to see, to see all opportunities by contact person for the business partner I can quickly see that and I can see look I've got five against Norm, I've got one on Kate and I've got one on Paul. Um, 
any of the, the, the views there are essentially customizable. So whatever data you need to see in SAP, you can add new ones by clicking on uh, create new. You can add a new user defined field. And as an example, I've just put another one here, last 25 purchased items against the customer. Okay, so it's a grid. You can also do graphical charts. I'll show you that on uh, the second tab, my data, but I'm just gonna do a grid for now. Okay, so I've added that new report. If I go back there and if I click on reports, so for Underwoods, there you go. That is the last 25 ordered lines, line items that they have actually uh, purchased from us. So it's a little query from the sales orders and I can again do my grouping. So I wanna see you know, by, by product type, uh, what have they actually been, been buying? Okay. Okay, that's right. Settings, if we open this one up. A couple of different tabs. Uh, these are ge the general sort of handling of the ribbon. So you can uh, set how you want it to default. Um, group display. You set what's specific to your role. So if you don't look after anything purchasing, you can you can disable anything that's not uh, that you don't actually want to see any data for. Um, keep all of those on. Uh, tracking. You already saw the idea that I showed you of how tracking works, but you can actually create that. Uh, when you click on the track, you can actually set it to automatically create an activity type. And I've set it as an other, um, which is a, is a nice function. Calendar, this is a huge, huge thing. Uh, so I've enabled calendar integration. I've enabled that I want all of these activity types in SAP to synchronize to my calendar. And I've set my synchronization settings for okay every minute and 14 days in the past, 29 days in advance. So this piece, I'm gonna sidestep back into SAP. Uh, so we're gonna use B1 up, but I'm again, I'm trying to give you a really a good understanding of how you can really make use of B1 up and CRM for Outlook. So if we look at my calendar, okay, so I've got, couple of different entries in there and okay I've got nothing nothing from next week next next Tuesday onwards um, I'm going to jump into SAP and okay there was our quote that we made earlier uh, that's a good good one to start with so what what we can do is I'm in SAP I'm running B1 up so these buttons are all driven with B1 up and, and, and B1 up is very powerful it, it sits on top of SAP's user interface and you can do so much with it um, so from when I email if I click that Printer delivery is, is uh, now going to create an activity and it's going to email that out. And then I can actually see, um, I can see that activity. If I click over here, I can see that activity. Quotation's just been emailed out. Um, but for me on the follow-ups, what I want to do is that, that was my, uh, my bit I wanted to show you. So I've created a little macro button and all it does is, you know, I'm, I'm the salesperson here. I want to just Update that to me. Okay, and I want to create a follow-up in one week. So when I click on that button, it automates the activity creation. And you can see I took a whole bunch of dynamic information from the quotation. So I've automatically filled it. I want a phone call. It's uh, from an email uh, emailed out. Um, I've taken the customer's name. I've taken the quote number. And I've set the date in advance a week. And then on the content tab, I've actually taken some information from here. So I took the remarks, I took the actual value of the quote um, and the due date and the actual customer's contact number and the contact who is on that quote. Now the value of that, if I click add, okay, so that's an open activity set in advance. Um, I'm also gonna just simulate a something for the finance team. So let's say I've chased up a customer on an order uh, sorry, an invoice, and uh, I wouldn't really want to know when are they going to pay this. So I can view my activities. I don't have anything there, but I'm going to chase them up tomorrow. I couldn't get them today. I'm going to click on chase up invoice. I've done a similar thing. I've just macroed some detail in there, and I've set it in for uh, tomorrow. Click add. Okay. And if I go back to my Outlook, my sync is uh, rechecking every minute, but you can see there is that quote. 
that we created that activity for and all of the detail that I pushed through has actually come straight through to my Outlook calendar so I now can on the go react to that so that'll appear on my, my calendar on my phone uh, it's in my native Outlook so it'll pop up so it really is this this integration can be hugely valuable if you start using activities more and what's even better is that it's a two-way sync so if I wanted to ha potentially move that uh, you know I'm I've called and the customer is actually not going to be there on the 31st but he's back in on the 1st I can actually just move that activity and that will resynchronize over to um, SAP and it will update that activity and the same goes for the time so if I you know if I wanted to s flip into a view where it's um, you know I can see what times things are in my day I can say actually I need more time on this move that okay and then with the next sync every minute, mine will synchronize these changes back to SAP. So if we look at that one there, uh, activity one two, sorry, it's quote one two eight eight. Jump back to SAP. Okay, and it's moved from the thirty first to the first. You can see that reflected here. Right, so now jumping back to the ribbon. So we've taken a look through the first tab, which is the business partner tab. Uh, now we're going to look at the my data tab. So when I click on that, you'll see a slightly different view. Um, in here, I can define so that depending on my role, I can define different views that I want. So I've set up a sales view, a purchasing view, and a service view. And again, this is completely down to the, the type of role that you have. Um, the views are very easy to create. You just click the create view at the bottom, and then you give them a name. And then for each one, you choose the objects that you want to see on that particular view. And you can pick an icon uh, that is associated with it. So if I click OK, um, my sales view at the moment, you can see I've got upcoming uh, activities and anything that's related to me where I'm the sales employee on the document and I've got or, or I'm the owner of the activity so I can see there's quite a bit on on my upcoming I can see my overdue any quotes that are uh, overdue I should have followed up on any service calls that I'm now behind on um, and again documents so whereas the first tab is the business partner specific level now is where your day-to-day -day, um, running of you know your your sales activities I can see all my quotes open across all the different business partners so here are you know I've got 10 10 open quotes against various different uh, customers and leads and same same concept as we saw on the first pane if I wanted to work on a particular deal like this Underwood electrical I can actually just click on that that will load up the quote on my screen I can see all the detail there and I can work with this form in the same way that you, you've seen already on the, on the previous tab. Okay. Any of these can be exported uh, straight to Excel if you want to have a look at that. And by the way, I didn't mention this earlier, but with quotes, if you have a signed off quote, you can uh, create a little bit of a flow. So you already saw how you can create an activity and link it to a document. So you could have a, a customer's sign off or a, a signed PO. You, create that as an activity and link it to a particular document and then actually on the quotes you could actually open the quote and you could copy straight through to sales order so if I click on that you'll see it's switched into uh, sales order mode and I could click save and I've got to set the date okay so for the dispatch 27 and save and that has now created a uh, sales order 1598 in our database okay there you go and again it's all using the standard SAP so I can do my relationship map and you can see there is the uh, quotation that it just came from which we did all through the ribbon right um, KPIs similar to the business partner I can see my uh, individual uh, year to date month to date targets uh, and a summary view of my uh, open quotes orders invoices and opportunities 
and again reports uh, here just like in the first tab you can have uh, specific reports that are either written in a way that they may be management level so you could have uh, for example my my data or customer balances so that's just a, a, a report view t a table grid style so I can at a snapshot see all the customers um, and this this is a query behind that so it can be customized as much as you want but might be specific uh, customers which are that I own uh, that, that I'm the sales employee for um, I can see their open invoice balance open order balance and the deliveries that are still open and you can I showed you earlier grids so you've seen there's a couple of different views there there's another one but you can take these grids and actually put the grid data into um, a visual so that's the same query but I've switched it into a bar chart so here we can see customers with overdue invoices and the total value of the actual open invoices and sorted descending order so we can just at any time visually see who are our biggest debtors that owe us money and I mean these could be pie charts bar charts you've got quite a bit of flexibility here um, within the uh, dashboard designer that uh, Boim has uh, so it's a nice and easy one to work with okay. and again from from this ribbon you have similar um, opportunities to create certain objects so you can create any activities for yourself or for colleagues if you want to create a follow-up or um, something specific to a customer account You'll see it's a little bit different there because we're triggering it from the My Data tab. First question it asks us is who is this, who is this uh, specific to? And I could be against a supplier, a customer, or a lead. Uh, so I want to find Acme. Okay, generate, and it starts to fill in. And now it fill in the activity as normal uh, to fill in who you know who's the person that should be owning this and any details about it. Could be maybe it's a lead, and I've got I need a credit check done by finance. I can create it from here and the same goes for sales opportunities or business partners create a new business partner you can use uh, that to create new leads suppliers or customers uh, on the fly setting their group their currency all this the standard SAP business um, partner master data and that is that is a summary of CRM fraud like I hope you guys have found this useful as a session to give you a a better understanding of what it uh, can do and how how well it works with SAP um, bringing Outlook and SAP nicely together in a more unified uh, approach and I hope it helps with all the remote working and just to finish up I'm gonna leave you with a quick look at the frequently asked questions so this uh, add-on uh, it supports from 8.82 all the way up through the 9 series, so 9.0, 9.1, 2, and 3, and it also supports the version 10, which is um, not officially released quite yet, but it's uh, very, very close. Um, supports all the versions of Outlook back from 2010. Um, it can work with multiple databases. I didn't show you that, but essentially, if you do have several company databases, there's an extra column that gets added, and you can actually see how uh, contacts and customers linked between different databases um, does this product only work when I'm on my domain no it's not it, it will just work as long as there's internet connection and it can access the server does it require b1 up no it does not so if you don't have boyum b1 up at the moment uh, you, you can still install and use CRM for Outlook uh, there are a couple of points that it is required so for the KPIs and the reports uh, B1 up is, is driving those, so those won't be available. Um, it's not it's not in offline mode yet, but that is planned for a future version. And its authorizations are actually um, configured and controlled in in the cloud. So typically, once this is configured and set up for a, a, a site. You have a super user login to the Boim portal, uh, and you can actually administer your own um, CRM for Outlook users there. And, and, and the user essentially is an email address, so you can change uh, users quite easily by yourself when, whenever you require. And does Boim store any business data? Nope, none of it is stored at all, and it is all secured over SSL. 
Keep in mind this, this product in itself has over 6,000 daily users and over 550 install sites globally. Uh, and it's won 20 plus uh, SAP awards. So it is a really, really great add-on. If there's any other questions that you guys have and you'd like to know, do please get in contact with us. Um, it's a very, very quick uh, solution to deploy, typically from a couple of hours to a half a day, and we can have all of your users set up. Uh, and it is, um, again, for, for times like right now, it really does help bring um, your SAP and your team together in, in a m much more efficient, uh, streamlined way. Thank you very much. Have a great day.